there are more than one billion people with disabilities in the world. Realizing their rights is a matter of justice and an investment in our common future. It is also central to realizing the core promise of the 2030 Agenda, to leave no one behind. The United Nations Disability Inclusion Strategy is my commitment to achieving transformative change, to raise the UN's performance on disability inclusion, not just in its policy, but also in its programs and operations. Our destination is clear, a world in which all people, including people with disabilities, can enjoy equal opportunities, have a full say in decision-making processes, and truly benefit from economic, social, political, and cultural life. Every person should expect nothing less. Together with people with disabilities as agents of change, we can build an inclusive, accessible, and sustainable world for all. Thank you. Welcome to this Generation Unlimited and UN Volunteers Joint Webinar. I'm Asako, the Partnership Development Specialist from the UNV office in New York. Generation Unlimited, GenU, and UNV are uh, youth-oriented and youth-friendly organizations. And we work together to empower young people to harness their potential and make a difference in their communities. Many young people work very hard to make um, their communities more inclusive and diverse. Despite their efforts, the rights of, of persons with disabilities are yet to be well recognized and respected in many places of the world. So today uh, we're gonna feature Gen Youth and UNV's work on disability inclusion and the young panelists young panelists' experiences to support persons with disabilities so that they can fully harness their talents, work comfortably in their workplaces. Uh, in this webinar, we're going to talk about, um, so here, um, I'm here with um, colleagues from all over the world. Um, so, love it, from UNDP Liberia, uh, Aya, um, from uh, UNICEF uh, Lebanon, and uh, Juliet from Nigeria, and uh, Charles also from UNICEF Nigeria, and Anouk from um, Uniliba, and Aziza, and Suze from the Organization of Bangladesh. And uh, thank you so much for Cynthia. She's a sign language in interpreter, and um, she will interpret our conversation in sign language. So, can you can you show the screen? Yes. So here we are. So you can see. So please, Aya, um, just to quickly make a self introduction. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Aya. I'm a former uh, UNV program assistant in the inclusive education program at UNICEF. Uh, I have been uh, working uh, on inclusive uh, education programs that aim. Uh, to ensure that all children with disability uh, have uh, access to education and services that facilitate the, their education. Uh, we have also worked on policies, curriculums, and with partners who advocate uh, for inclusion through many activities that aim to raise parents uh, and community awareness on inclusion and diversity. Thank you. So next, Lovet. Okay, thank you and good afternoon from my end. Hello, good morning, wherever you are. I am Lovet Michael Wea and I am a national UNV specialist from Liberia, serving as youth coordinator with UNDP Liberia. I have worked and continue to work with persons with disabilities. Um, by the beginning of this year, the close of last year to the beginning of this year, we worked on the national action plan and the aim is to ensure that policies are, in, are put in place for persons with disabilities to be included within the development uh, of Liberia and other institutions. So there are several other works we do. We work with individuals with disability, institutions with disabilities, uh, both 
from the government standpoint and from the CSO standpoint. So our aim is to work both from the grassroots, um, that is from bottom to top and from top to bottom, so as to ensure that no one is left behind. Thank you and over. Thank you a little bit, Aziza. Can you make Hello, your introduction? Um, uh, good afternoon. Uh, I'm from Bangladesh, and here uh, the sun has just set. So that's why maybe uh, many of you are in the morning zone. Um, BBDN works as a linkage between the supply end, which is the candidate side, persons with disabilities, and also with the demanded, which are the private sectors, we create a linkage to create employment, meaningful employment, and also engage ourselves in skills development and other relevant uh, requirements that uh, the persons with disabilities require to actually participate in a mainstream job market here in Bangladesh. Thank you. Thank you so much, Aziza. So Anouk. <clears throat> Hi everyone, uh, my name is Anouk. I'm the head for social equity and inclusion uh, at Unilever. Um, I am, I have blondish hair. I wear a, a white sweater and I've blurred my background because there's all kinds of boxes beside, uh, behind me because I just moved house uh, uh, last weekend. And I'm very excited to be with you today and to tell a little bit more about Unilever and our disability and inclusion strategy. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anouk. So, Juliet, over to you. Hi, everyone. My name is Juliet, and I am a U reporter and part of the Young People's Action team for UNICEF here in Nigeria. And it is 2 p.m. here, 14 o'clock here in Nigeria. So it's afternoon, so good afternoon from here. And I am basically here to talk about um, volunteering and inclusion, especially as a young person. And it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Juliet. So lastly, Charles, over to you. Good day, everyone. My name is Charles Ndifon. I'm a youth reporter from Nigeria. I'm interested in helping disabled people who have the inability to assist themselves in education, employment, health services, and social services. I tend to give people or assist people that are not um, strong enough to do their works and making sure that their peers doesn't um, discriminate them from doing what they should do. Thank you. Thank you so much, Charles. And from here, um, Aziza and Anouk are going to share their presentations. And after that, I will talk about a little bit about UN volunteers uh, work on disability inclusion. And then after that, we move on to a group discussion. So, Aziza, um, floor is yours. Um, may I have the slides on, please? Thank you. Yes. The next slide. Yes. Um, as you already know, I'm Aziza, working to create employment opportunities for persons with disabilities in a country that is not very well equipped to guarantee accessibility and other support services to the community. BBDN is an organization that was created by the private sector and powered by the development sector to ensure proper scope of work for persons with disabilities. Uh, in the country, almost, um, next slide. Uh, as uh, we have to discuss this, uh, I'm going on to the discussion. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, in a country, uh, almost with 9.07% of persons with disabilities, and the most of them are out of the work stream. 
people with disabilities face challenges at the family and community levels here, uh, including obtaining jobs uh, and skills development, and incur additional costs associated with training and job placement and transportation as well. There are also issues with the employer's perceptions. The next slide. Um, employer's perceptions of inclusion as well as trends in the job sector. And the next slide, please. Uh, there are additionally policy barriers and strategic limitations, such as conflicts between labor laws and rights and protection acts, as well as the lack of universal social protection mechanism, uh, further hinders our progress in uh, inclusion and diversity in Bangladesh. So this is basically the scenario that we are in in Bangladesh. Next slide. Now, what is BBDN doing? to uh, make the changes or what differently, what are the different things that we are doing? Um, Bangladesh has many companies that employ persons with disabilities and there are many others who are willing to employ workers with disabilities. So uh, therefore, uh, there was no forum to bring all these people together uh, to share the learning experience and the successful policies and practices and models to promote disability inclusion in the workplace, which BBDN is currently doing. BBDN believes that uh, participation in such a network will facilitate the knowledge sharing, collaboration, and mutually benefited activities leading to increased employment of persons with disabilities. Employers joining BBDN uh, can increase their capacity to address the needs related to diversity, corporate social responsibility, legal adherence, and human resources. Next slide. Our activities are based on these three areas, inclusion services, advocacy and research, and awareness activities. That includes sensitizations uh, for pri uh, sessions for, of the private sector, hand-holding them to grow up as an inclusive workplaces, organized job fairs, and targeted recruitment drives, awareness campaigns, media engagement, research, and policy advocacy. Next slide. So as we have been working in both the sectors like employment and also somewhat in the skills development areas for persons with disabilities, we have learned uh, many things about the cause and how things might work better for persons with disabilities. And uh, for that reason, we have a little bit of um, suggestions for persons with disabilities working in the sector is uh, to improve diversity and equity and inclusion Persons with disabilities and individuals can educate themselves and develop skills that are in demand in the mainstream workforces. They can also challenge stereotypes and advocate for policies and practices that promote inclusivity, such as inclusion, inclusive hiring processes, accessibility, reasonable accommodation, and fair play. Next slide. Um, as you see, I have also mentioned all these in the slide, and we believe like to get there, to become an inclusive society, to become a society that accepts diversity and also accepts people with disabilities in the work stream. We have to all work together and always raise our voices, raise flags where it's needed, and work together to create a more inclusive place in terms of skills development, employment, media awareness, and overall inclusivity of the society. Thank you. Thank you so much, Azida. It was very informative. Um, yeah, thank you. So now we are moving to um, Anouk's presentation. Anouk, over to you. Hi, everyone. Can everybody hear me well? Yes. Yes, yes great. So, um, yeah, so as I mentioned, my name is Anouk, I work for Unilever, and I wanted to tell uh, a little bit more about what Unilever is doing in our own operations uh, for uh, persons with uh, a disability. Go to the next slide, please. So here in a nutshell, you can see, um, uh, you know, an overview of our strategy uh, around equity, diversity and inclusion. Um, and globally, we focus on four uh, identity groups, uh, um, including um, 
people from different race and ethnic backgrounds, persons with disability, um, women, um, and uh, people from the LGBTQI plus community. But today I wanted to tell you a little bit more and zoom in about uh, on what we do uh, for people with disability. So if you look at our strategy, we have various pillars. So the first pillar is around workforce representation because we want to build a workforce that fundamentally represents the communities that we serve. Um, so we have a specific target which um, is aimed at 5% of the workforce to be made of people with disabilities by 2025. So that's a little bit about the, uh, about the people working for Unilever. The second pillar is really about the culture um, and capabilities and, and making sure that we drive an inclusive culture uh, at Unilever. So we want to build the knowledge and the skills um, to ensure we have an inclusive culture. So uh, an example is the Enable Network, um, uh, which is a, a network uh, founded in, in 2019. We currently have about 440 uh, employees active in the network who really kind of do sharing and learning uh, around um, inclusive workplaces and, and things they um, uh, face on a, on a daily basis. Another example is, for example, our Equity Is campaign. Uh, Unilever is one of the largest marketeers in the world. And through our advertising muscle, both inside and outside Unilever, we want to make sure we drive inclusivity um, everywhere. Um, and we want to spread the awareness on the systemic barriers that continue to exist for certain groups in, the, in society. The third pillar really is around reviewing the procedures and the policies at Unilever. Um, and, and an example that we have in, on, and a commitment that we've made is to make sure that all our sites, our factories, our offices around the world are fully accessible by 2025. And then the final pillar is more aimed at big advocacy and partnerships. So examples include, for example, the Global Business Disability Network, in which we are working together with leading multinational companies, together with the ILO, the International Labour Organization, um, to understand what companies like ours can do to optimally serve persons with disability. Or uh, another example is Purple Space, which is one of the world's uh, largest networking um, hub for uh, disabled employees. So what I wanted to do next is show you a short film uh, of how we bring that to life at Unilever. This is um, how kind of Unilever's operations team are driving disability and inclusion through, for example, the use of technology tools, talent and recruitment in our partnership strategy. You will, in the movie, there will be refer, refer to, uh, to UNA, which uh, as an FYI is our artificial intelligence tool, uh, which helps um, uh, employees with their questions in case you were wondering. Um, can you please play the video? Oh. Uh, so this always happens. I don't think the technology is working with us today. Are, are you, is, is the video playing? Uh, sorry, I look um, just a second. We are trying to figure out this technical problem is happening all the time. So please be patient a little bit more. Uh, Okay, now I I can show the video. Uh, okay, video. Okay, a little bit slow. Um, so while fixing this uh, technical problem, can you uh, go ahead, Anouk? 
So yeah, okay. sure. I'll, yeah. I'll just uh, go to the I'm last I'm so sorry. Slide. Yes. In the film, you'll see at the end. So, so what what I wanted to show you in the film is how the Unilever operations is looking at, you know, how we make our digital tools more accessible, uh, how we incorporate disability uh, and the theme of serving uh, uh, people with disability in how we do recruitment, how we look at talent. Um, and the film ends with a lady called Karen, um, who was uh, one of our Sakshim interns. And Sakshim is a program, an internship program in Bangladesh, which is essentially aimed at um, making sure that uh, we have an entry level experiential program for persons with, with disability. And they're, they're all, they will be then on a six month journey um, with all kinds of you know, interventions and support. You can see here an act, um, uh, is, which is more about the policies and procedures. Uh, uh, there will be focus on psychological safety and the environment, um, et cetera. So, um, I wanted to kind of show that as an example of uh, someone who benefited uh, from our inclusive programs and who actually is hired now uh, at Unilever as one of our employees. So thank you so much. With that, I, uh, I want to hand over to the next speaker and I'm looking forward to the Q&A. Thank you so much, Anouk. So we're going to share the video in the comment chat box so um, the audience can see the video. Um, let's move on to Juliet. So could you please um, present uh, your activities and what you do uh, in Nigeria? Thank you. Okay. Over Hello, to you. Everyone. Yeah, thank you. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me clearly. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you so much. So like I introduced earlier, my name is Juliet and I am a U reporter and a, I'm part of the Why Young People's Action Team for UNICEF here in Nigeria. And today I'm going to be talking about volunteering and also promoting inclusion. And this is from a young person's perspective, especially for young people. So next slide, please. Thank you. Thank you. So to me, volunteering, volunteering simply means paying it forward. As a young person, it is important that we pay it forward. And it also means making positive impact in our community. How do you make positive impact in your community? By um, helping those around you and seeing that systems around you are better and effective. And basically, to sum it all up, volunteering is helping other people lead a better life. And what better way can we do it? Or how can we do it? Or when can we do it? Volunteering, as a young person, it is important that we volunteer because we have the energy, we have the time, we have the luxury of time to to volunteer and also help people live a better life next slide please so as a volunteer i've been a volunteer since 2019 so basically i'm just going to be talking about my volunteering experience as a u reporter and i'm also going to be sharing um about generation unlimited and the young people's oh, action know. team this is because this is where young people can key in to volunteer for UNICEF, if you want to volunteer um, for UNICEF, it is important that you join as a U reporter or Generation Unlimited. This is an opportunity that UNICEF has given us to give back to our community and to make impact in our community. So as a U reporter, I've had the opportunity to air my views about healthcare, education, youth, unemployment, disease outbreaks, and other pertinent issues affecting the lives of young people through the short message service post, which was created by um, U reports. That's a system where young people can report issues going on in their community so that action can be taken. Then also, um, late um, during December last year, I joined over 100 young girls from Africa in the DRC forum. And this is where we were able to 
young girls between the age of 16 to 24, we gather together to share our views and what was going on in our community, especially as regarding the girl child, right, in order to promote gender equality. This is where we talked about um, issues such as um, gender-based violence. This is also where we talked about how women are not being carried along, right? This is where we talk about inclusion. Most women are excluded in a lot of activities. So we brainstormed ideas on how we can ensure that young women, even young women living with disability, which are mostly excluded in important issues, how we can ensure that everyone is carried along. This is what inclusivity is all about. Next slide, please. Um, now also I'm going to be talking about um, Generation Unlimited. And um, Gen U Ninja, like we call it, I'm from Nigeria. So whenever you hear Ninja, this is how we say we are Nigerians. And it's a public-private youth partnership platform established to support adolescents and youth to successfully transition from learning to earning, right? So as a young person, Gen U is a platform that accommodates people, that accommodates every young person, whether young people living with disabilities, every young person across the country to be able to transition. And through the Generation Unlimited, a platform was created, which is the Yoma platform. The Yoma platform um, is a platform, digital platform, where young people can learn skills to help them better transition from learning to earning, because this is a, we are at a stage where we transition from learning to earning. And also about the... Genu platform. Um, there are Genu volunteers. Some of the some of the activities that's been carried out by um, Generation Unlimited team is helping UNICEF with the best registration campaign, which happened I think last year. So these are ways that young people can be carried along in helping and in volunteering, volunteering and being part of the community. Next slide, please. Thank you. I think this is my final slide. Here I'm going to be talking about what inclusivity means and inclusivity in the aspect of carrying um, young people, people living with disability, most especially because people living with disabilities are mostly excluded in our communities. So for me, inclusivity, for me, people living with disabilities face a high level of bias a high level of discrimination and exclusion. And most of these challenges include employability, which is what the Generation Unlimited platform is all about, right? Employability, helping people assess employability skills. And also your people living with disability are mostly, um, they have challenges such as access to healthcare services. And this is what UNICEF is all about, ensuring that young people have access to healthcare services. People living with disabilities have lack of access to education and they are mostly stigmatized. And this, in the concept of inclusivity, we should ensure that people living with disabilities are included in every core programming. And I think that's what I like about what UNICEF is doing in Nigeria and in other countries. Like a webinar like this, we will have people will have an interpreter to interpret so that people who cannot hear can be able to carry, can be able to follow along with the discussion or whatever that is going in. And to me, this is what inclusivity means because people living with disability are uniquely abled and we should be able to treat them as one, treat them with so much respect. And that is why in webinars like this, I call on young people organizations to ensure that they in their core programming captures people living with disability especially young people living with disabilities and thank you so much this is the end of my slide thank you for listening thank you so much juliet that was really really impressive uh, and i really learned a lot of generation unlimited activities and your activities in nigeria so let's move on to charles charles uh, move, the floor is yours Good day, everyone, again. My name is Charles Ndifon. I'm a year reporter. Please, can you move into the next slide? OK. In this, my work, I showed how we can be able to support or put in effort to help disabled people by making, by showing them respect. Because 
disability doesn't mean it is, disability is not inability. It means they are capable of helping the society. They can show support. They can do things for the society. They can assist us, uh, their peers in the society. Also, if you can create forums for them to be involved with things happening in the country because everybody is needed because you don't know what can happen in the future. So this way, in a forum where we can make sure people that are disabled are, are among and feeling are not feeling discriminated, it will promote a sense of unity and cooperation. Finally, I will say that we as volunteers should be able to help people that are not um, to help people that are disabled to promote a good and uh, a good lifestyle and unity in the in the society and the country at large thank you thank you charles uh, so from here i'm gonna um, present a little bit about your volunteers activities so this uh, deployment, this is a um, snapshot of the deployment of UN volunteers to the UN entities in 2022, which shows their commitment to promoting diversity and inclusivity in their host UN entities. Uh, the fact that more than half of the volunteers were female and the majority were from the global south indicates a deliberate effort to ensure equity and the representation in the host UN entities. You know, we also deployed volunteers with disabilities, which, uh, which is a step towards promoting inclusivity and breaking down barriers that often prevent persons with disabilities from participating in humanitarian and development work. Overall, these st statistics demonstrate a significant contribution of UNV to the UN, UN, UN's mandate of promoting peace and development worldwide. So next one, please. So can you uh, move to the next slide? Yes, uh, so this is a global snapshot of UN volunteers with disabilities deployed in 2022. In 2022, 204 UN volunteers with disabilities were assigned to support 23 UN entities in 86 countries. The five most common jobs uh, that UN volunteers with disabilities took are one program officer, and two communications officer and three program assistant and four communications assistant and five community development advisor and at five uh, top five countries where UN volunteers with disabilities are from were Bangladesh Democratic Republic of Congo Pakistan Kenya and Sweden so can you uh, go back to the previous slide Yes, I'm gonna uh, share with you a, a successful program that UNB collaborated with UNDP. UNDP, UNB Talent Program for Young Professionals with Disabilities was launched in 2017. UNDP and UNB committed to leaving no one behind. As part of this commitment, the talent program promotes the inclusive inclusion of persons with disabilities into our workplaces. The talent program also aims to build a talent pipeline of highly qualified professionals with disabilities who can contribute to the development sector and to attaining sustainable, sustainable development goals at the national and global levels. The talent program offers an opportunity to work um, in the United Nations system. Their assignments may be with UNDP country offices, regional offices, and headquarters. Through a year-long year assignment, young professionals with disabilities acquire practi practical work experiences and get exposed to the UN development mission. And can you move to the next, next slide? Yes. <laughs> so this is a, a concrete example of um, UN volunteers with disabilities or UN volunteers um, working for persons with disabilities. So this is the case in uh, Kazakhstan. So Ms. Gurzia Jevabieva, a national UN volunteer expert with UNDP, possesses more than 20 years of experience uh, in social protection. 
So she's a very experienced student volunteer. She coordinated a team of three UNO volunteers at the Center of Vocational Rehabilitation for Persons with Disabilities. And UNO volunteers organized a job fair for persons with disabilities, conducted a physical, uh, psychological, and a vocational, uh, physical and a vocational training, and vocational rehabilitation. Among the applicants at the center, more than 50% of persons with group one and two disabilities, and including uh, intellectual disabilities. So far, 70% of applicants are able to find the jobs and became entrepreneurs. And out of uh, 256 persons with disabilities who applied, one, more than 100 are now employed. And can you move to the next slide? So this is the last example. Um, so this is another example in, of the UN volunteer with disability in Indonesia. So we can, so he's a, a UN volunteer in Indonesia. Is a, um, so he worked, works on uh, as a volunteer disability inclusion officer uh, with UNICEF. In Indonesia, we can uh, we can the main responsibility with UNICEF includes mainstreaming disability inclusion uh, pra practices for children with disabilities. He ensures the access at the board in education, wash, child protection, nutrition, health, social policy, and emergency and disaster risk reduction programs. Include and uh, sense so. Um, so he also provides an important link between the organization of persons with disabilities and UNICEF by assisting his colleagues as an inter intermediary to communicate with persons with disabilities. So while working with uh, different counterparts, he has been able to model professional behavior, demonstrating patience and flexibility in adjusting his approaches in his workplace. So this is the end of my presentation. So now if you have any questions, please um, let us know. So we try to um, address the, uh, your questions. Oh, so I I think um, the Anouk's video uh, was shared in the comment, the chat box. So now uh, you can click and watch her uh, video. This year, we launched the new Accessibility Communication Channel, which provides information about assistive technology tools for all in the years. As a result, we increased more than 200% the SharePoint site viewers after 30 days of launch, and we are helping Unilever to be the first employer of choice for people with disabilities. Hi, we as UNA team took an initiative in 2022 to improve the accessibility standard of UNA portal in ServiceNow. With this vision, we partnered with AbilityNet to assess our platform on WCAG 2.1 standard. And as part of our assessment, we identified 40 plus findings. Throughout the year, we managed to fix 50% of the findings and the reminder work is in progress. We aim to be fully compliant and meet the need of all employees by 2023. We need to innovate and bring a better candidate experience to our young talents. We implemented our digital application tool via chatbot and help our recruitment suppliers improve the accessibility on theirs too. Not only for our program, but with a wider vision to impact positively the Brazilian marketing with full accessibility recruitment tools. It's a pleasure for me to work with diversity, and especially in a company that we can experience this diversity every day. Lime Connect represents the largest network of professionals, including veterans who have disabilities in the world, and we are so excited to tap into their network to bring great talent to Unilever. As a result of the participation within Unilever's engagements in Lime Connect, we have been able to drive potential talent from Lime Connect, making 10 offers, leading to four intern hires this past summer for our internship cohort. 
Leaning forward into 2023, we anticipate continuing the great work that the recruitment team has done within recruiting talent into FTE roles, as well as university recruitment. Further, as a result of the feedback from the Lime Connect relationship and candidates who have disabilities, we will continue to build a sustainable process for all of North America. I struggle a lot in opening up about my disability, but honestly, part four months, I started embracing that disability. I'm not letting that disability limit myself. I'm not letting it define me. I am defining my disability, not the other way around. So I'm honestly thankful for that. This opportunity to actually discover more of my true self when I disassociate from this disability stereotypes that people have put on past many years. So thank you so much. I uh, uh, we we are so glad that we resolved the technical issue um, and uh, we showed a video. So now I uh, move on to Q and A session. So you, if you have any questions, burning questions, <laughs> please uh, let us know. Um, if not, uh, we're gonna move on to our um, panel discussions. So now from here, I will hand over the moderation to Aziza. It's okay. So that, you know, that our panelists, our speakers can share their experiences on disability inclusion in their countries. Hi. Hey. Oh, so, <laughs> sorry. Um, my bad. So <laughs> I, I continue to moderate. Um, my bad. So let's move on to our panel discussion. So now um, we prepared three key questions, and I'm gonna ask our you know distinguished um, speakers uh, the questions, and then they will share their experiences, their answers. So uh, what is the first question? So okay. What's the most difficult challenge young persons with disabilities face at their workplaces or communities in your country or in your company or in your organization? So now I'm going to ask uh, Aya. So do you have uh, any comment, yes. insight to share? Hello, everyone again. Uh, I will share my experience in uh, Lebanon. Uh, most of the challenges faced by uh, young persons with disabilities uh, in the communities, at their workplaces, or even at their education institutions are related first to the fact of young people hiding their disabilities in fear of being stigmatized by the community. Uh, we, have also, we have also the challenge related to the acceptance and awareness of the community to everything related to the rights of persons with disabilities since people are not aware of the types of disabilities and they fear the contact with children or youth with disabilities and the tra traditions in the communities uh, used to hide uh, children with disabilities and not engage them in any studies or activities uh, because uh, they thought it is uh, like a taboo uh, to have a child with the uh, disabilities. Uh, also, in terms of accessibility, more, most of the places are not prepared in an inclusive way to ease the work of persons with disabilities on, and young persons uh, even do not have uh, a lot of job, uh, job opportunities related uh, 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 to their uh, functionality. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Aya, for sharing your experience and insight. Um, yeah, so accessibility is always an issue for persons with disabilities and for everyone, right? So thank you for sharing your um, opinion. So since we have Anouk here, um, 
yeah, she's from Unilever, and I'm very curious about her experience and insight uh, from the private sector. So, Anouk, can you share a little bit about what is the most difficult challenge young persons with disabilities face at your workplace or in your community? I guess in, in, in my experience, uh, persons with disability face multiple challenges, right? Not only in the workplace, but day to day, right? Whenever uh, they buy products, whenever they, uh, you know, use public transport, whenever they want to find jobs. Um, so, which is why at Unilever, we take, uh, it's a little bit of a different kind of uh, definition, but we use it like a full ecosystem approach. So um, in my presentation, I laid out the types of interventions that we take in our own operation. So at the Unilever kind of workplace, but if you look at our impact, it's much larger, right? So we also look what we could do in our supply chain. So for example, we have a commitment that we want to buy more from diverse suppliers and that includes um, businesses that are owned by people with disabilities, right? And that is arguably the best way to empower them um, in, in terms of, of, of access to jobs. We also look at our footprint through our brands. So that means that we look at, from a consumer perspective, we look at the types of products that they need. Um, and uh, through the unstereotype movement, we also look at the way we portray people in our advertisements. So that also um, includes a commitment to increase the amount of advertisements that we push out there that includes people with disability as well. So there's various ways that Unilever, not only for the people in the own operation. So obviously we look at how we uh, make workplaces more accessible. We have an internal checklist uh, and we look at um, various types of accessibility in the workplace, Brian Sig uh, Signage, uh, we look at induction loop systems, high adjustable desks. There's all kinds of interventions that we that we take at the own operations. But I think the strength from a Unilever perspective is that we look at the full impact uh, of our business, both in the supply chain and through our brands. And that's where I think we can most op optimally help uh, persons with a disability. Thank you, Anouk. It's really, really impressive. Um, and then especially this advertisement, it's really, yeah, I'm glad you mentioned that because we have, you know, unconscious bias about, you know, any, yes, absolutely. Like, yeah, we're not um, aware of those. Yeah, any, you know, groups and persons. So, yeah, it's really good to know. And thank you so much for sharing. And now um, I'm going to move on to the next question. So what have you done to change the working environment or social norms in your communities for persons with disabilities. So please share your achievement and what you have done. Um, so maybe Aziza, can you share um, your experience a little bit? Thank you. <clears throat> uh, as a matter of fact, we work with our private sector as they are members of our network. And they uh, actually, we give them services to be inclusive. And side by side, we also do projects, projects under various donor agencies and development organizations. So through our interventions, we saw that many times the private sector actually requires a certain type of skilled people that we are not being able to deliver or linked to. So in that case, uh, keeping that thing in mind, we engaged ourselves uh, in various skills development activities or initiatives with the private sector. And we are also engaged in uh, various uh, skills, uh, uh, upskilling projects with the development sector as well. Uh, and uh, the way we are doing it right now is targeting each industries. And uh, we are trying to uh, create business compacts so that the private sector comes in, they give us the uh, market driven or market, uh, uh, I mean, the skills that is the market is in need of. And then we try to connect um, training centers, training institutes who provide the trainings. So, and we also drive the persons with disabilities towards the training center so that they can actually upskill them uh, 
and align them with the market demand and get into the mainstream job market. And also with that, we have seen, uh, we have done job fairs previously. And uh, we have seen that uh, job fairs work to actually employ people with disabilities. However, uh, we have done something creative that is we've organized a very selective uh, walk-in interview system uh, to engage the private sector and people with disabilities. Uh, we have chosen one uh, company at a time and uh, based on their vacancies, based on the requirements, we have actually connected to the right people. And we only brought those people for an interview session where they could talk and they could have a, a detailed interview process and they can choose their employers and the employers can choose their candidates. And uh, we have also engaged in various activities like Gen News and other platforms where we can connect to more persons with disabilities, more candidates, so that when we engage the persons with disabilities, we can um, uh, actually gather more information and we can see the, what the market is uh, in need of and what the people with disabilities are suffering from and their uh, issues. So we actually target um, each uh, employers at a time and we work, uh, I mean, you know, we work, we develop plans for each em employer actually. There is no uh, plan like that works for everyone. So we actually take each employer and cater and tailor make their uh, activities and then deliver it to them. So that is what we have been trying to do um, differently or trying to make a change with. Thank you, Aziza. That's also very impressive. And then I, um, I think this tailor-made uh, approach for persons with disability is very important. Um, thank you so much. And now, um, yeah, Charles, um, can you share your comments or insights? So, what have you, what have you done to make your community or workplace more inclusive? Hello, I want to use an example in my in my university. I was able to work hand in hand with my colleagues and my lecturers to help a colleague of ours in his education. That is where we tried to, because he was not mentally fit to understand the course he was doing. We had to create time and we did the extramural classes for him so that he could be able to understand the lesson taught. So I would say that we should create, we should meet their peers, our peers to create a, a comfortable environment for all of them to be able to be free and comfortable in the environment. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Um, yeah, your first-hand experience is really, really impressive and we, we can learn a lot uh, from your experience. So now uh, we received one question from a uh, um, viewer. So how do you target those with disabilities in local communities who are not able to get this information? Also, how, yeah, how, how do you um, yeah, do outreach to those uh, with disabilities? So I think um, many um, persons with disabilities have no access or limited access to information. So do you have uh, any experiences uh, to improve accessibility um, to information for persons with disabilities? So if you have any comments on this question, please raise your hand. Ah, okay, you, Juliet, can you, you go ahead? Yeah, so um, if you can put the question again on the screen, but I think I understand it. Yeah, so I think, I know that people living with disabilities in various communities, they have a network. They have a network um, of people living with disabilities. They are almost in every community. So they have leaders, they have um, people who represent them at every at every level so in order to target them with this information if you 
uh, working as an organization or as an individual, you find a way to reach out to those network. Because if you can get to any leader or any person leading the community of people living with disability, then you can get to the rest of them, like to all of them. So uh, that's why it's important to encourage people with disabilities to join communities, to join networks, right? So I think we did uh, we did um, a program, I think sometime last year for people living with disabilities because we understand that we cannot reach out to just one person. We had to reach out to the network and from there we were able to reach out to other people living with disabilities. So in every community, there is a network of people living with disabilities. They have a, a, a group, I can call it a group or a community, yes. It's easier to find them when you ask. So. So depending on wherever you are, whichever country you are, uh, you should ask for people living with disabilities in your country. But I know it is they have their community here. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, community-based approach is, you know, it's always, you know, um, very effective. And then, yeah. Marco, um, can okay. I just also uh, say something in this okay. question, how the local level community... Um, May I share some of it? So uh, first, can I um, give the floor to Anouk because I see raise her hand before you. So and then after that, so you can comment. Anouk, go ahead. Well, I just wanted to build on that. Uh, that indeed, um, from I guess for a, a multinational company like Unilever, it's it's very difficult to uh, reach uh, everyone. Uh, although I I guess our advertisements and our products. Are, are reaching uh, everyone in, in, in kind of globally and in local communities. The way we do that um, uh, is we partner uh, together with, with partner organizations who, are, who have brought networks uh, like Juliet just mentioned. So that kind of partner strategy and making sure that you are um, kind of engaged in the, in the local communities and that you know who the, who the, who the NGOs and the right partners are that helps us as um, companies to, to, to connect in with uh, uh, with you directly. Um, Aziza, I, I know you want to say something as well. Thank you, Anouk. Uh, in Bangladesh, the way we work is we have organizers and organizations of persons with disabilities, even in the rural areas. So all the organizations are connected to the persons with disabilities in their locality. And through all our projects, we try to connect with the candidates through the OPDs so that they actually are aware of the activities going on and they also have a resource pool of the candidates. So that is a very good approach that I see. And we also have local level disability focused organized uh, 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 departments from the government who actually work to rope them in in the process. And all the NGOs that uh, work in Bangladesh uh, and the NGOs who work in disability, especially in Bangladesh, are also connected with the OPD network. And we are also uh, bringing the network under one umbrella so that, you know, they don't form different umbrellas and different, uh, I mean, uh, different cohorts for the uh, uh, OPDs. So all the OPDs are actually coming under one roof and they're uh, creating a pool of candidates and all the resources, all the skills that uh, is being given to the persons with disabilities are being, uh, uh, are being advocated and promoted through those links. So that's why that's a way I think we can connect more people with uh, local levels or the rural level people with the system. Thank you, Aziza. Yeah, imagine if uh, every community is more uh, accessible and inclusive. And uh, yeah, we can include everyone, right? So <laughs> uh, we need uh, yeah, someone like you um, in each community. So now uh, I'm going to move on to the last question. Um, so in general, so what do you think? What young people can do to make their workplaces or your communities more inclusive? That's a very important question, right? So now I'm going to give it a flow to Lovet. So do you have any comments? So what young people can do to make their communities more inclusive? OK, um, thank you, Asako, and thank you, everyone. Well, I have met and talked to more young people. Like one thing I mentioned, always is advocacy for the rights of persons with disabilities or the inclusion of persons with disabilities. Uh, 
has evolved from just saying words to, to, to action. So I think one key thing that young persons can do to ensure that their workplaces and communities and even their nation, their nations are uh, inclusive is to advocate both in words and in action. Um, most times we have persons with disabilities and even people who work with persons with disabilities go on radio, go on social media and advocate. But then one way that makes advocacy more effective is to have persons with disabilities who have the opportunity to serve in different positions, use their ability, use their technical know-how to prepare a path for even those who are still at the back. So if a person with disability is employed as, uh, take for instance, a computer analyst, the work he does in that com uh, company gives him the leverage to uh, have more jobs and even opens the door for people who who did not believe earlier on that persons with disabilities are capable. I mean, through that work, they, they, they kind of understand the work that person and, and the, the capabilities of persons with disabilities. So that's one way I think uh, young people can ensure that their working place and their communities are inclusive, advocacy both through verbal means and through action. Uh, action-oriented means. Um, that's one thing. Another thing that we could do uh, to ensure that um, these, the communities are inclusive is to take action. Um, this kind of action is not, not, not necessarily individual or collective. Uh, persons with disabilities stay united. Um, institutions that work with persons with disabilities stay united. Most countries, you have many CSOs working with persons with disabilities. However, their portfolios are slightly different and uh, their portfolios are uh, sometimes uh, overlapping each other. So it makes uh, the effect of what they do to serve not to work as effectively as it should. In a case that we have about 10 to 20, maybe 50 different institutions working with persons with disabilities on a united banner, it gives a clearer picture of which institution is responsible for working in the accessibility sector, which uh, CSOs or institutions are responsible for working in the education sector, like that work go in a once the work is synchronized, uh, you kind of understand uh, and know and understand that, uh, yeah, this is working. The impact of the work of CSOs and young people uh, who are into organizations, building and working for persons with disabilities, their impact is also felt as well. So those are the two things, uh, two ways I think, I think persons with disabilities uh, can be included within both their working spaces and their communities as well as their nations. Thank you and over. Thank you, Robert, for sharing your um, experience. And you know, you know uh, um, very well about their needs. Uh, and then, um, yeah, it's really uh, impressive to learn that uh, you know their needs are on the ground. So now, I'll uh, quickly give the floor to Aya. So she also have has uh, she has a comment on this question. Over to you, Aya. Yeah, um, to have um, an inclusive space and community, uh, it is always important to engage uh, and uh, encourage uh, young persons with disabilities in all uh, the activities done uh, in society uh, through uh, the empowerment programs. Uh, and uh, it's very important to make sure um, uh, their participation is there in all the program phases, uh, from planning to, uh, to evaluation. Uh, it is also important to raise um, uh, awareness and talk about the rights uh, of uh, the persons with disabilities, ensuring that everyone is aware uh, of the types of disabilities uh, and the capabilities of each person to see the person first and not the disability, um, aiming uh, for an inclusive space and uh, accepting uh, uh, everyone. Um, uh, 
um, and each person should start with, with its own surrounding, uh, keeping in mind that it's not just about access, it's about valuing everyone. Over, thanks. Thank you, Aya. It's a really good um, remark um, at the end of this session. Yeah, I agree. So we should look at the person, the person first, not the disability. So, you know, how much we love loving people, like, you know, we are women and men and disabled and etc. But we should look at the person first. And then, yeah, it help us um, have our community more inclusive. So thank you very much, everyone, for participating in this session. Um, and then thank you so much for um, everyone uh, in this room um, for joining us. And I hope you guys are inspired by these wonderful speakers. And um, of course, we will continue uh, our discussion to make our communities more inclusive. So thank you so much. So have a wonderful day or afternoon or night. Bye. There are more than 1 billion people with disabilities in the world. Utilizing their rights is a matter of justice and an investment in our common future. It is also central to realizing the core promise of the 2030 Agenda, to leave no one behind. The United Nations Disability Inclusion Strategy is my commitment to achieving transformative change to raise the UN's performance on disability inclusion, not just in its policy, but also in its programs and operations. Our destination is clear, a world in which all people, including people with disabilities, can enjoy equal opportunities, have a full say in decision-making processes, and truly benefit from economic, social, political, and cultural life. Every person should expect nothing less. Together with people with disabilities as agents of change, we can build an inclusive, accessible and sustainable world for all. Thank you.